Hey, what's going on everybody? My name is Ben from the Benjamin Butler Company and this is my ShopBot CNC machine. I recently added dust collection to my machine and with voice control automation, tons of suction, and a surprise up in the attic, I think this project came out perfectly. So, if you're looking to add dust collection to a CNC machine, stick around. I'll show you how I did it. <laughs> So I've got my shop bought up here on this big mobile cart that I made out of the crate that it came in. And now it's time to start thinking about dust collection before I can get the machine up and running. I have a pretty unique workshop in that my large two horsepower dust collection unit lives in my attic. That presents some incredible advantages in my opinion and one distinct disadvantage. I'll bet you can guess both of them very easily. That's right, the disadvantage is emptying the dust collector bag. Thankfully, I don't have to do that all too often, but I'm curious to see what adding a CNC machine like this is going to do. It may get to the point where I'm having to empty that dust collector bag too frequently, and I would explore then an option to get my dust collector out of the attic and bring it down here, either into the workshop or potentially outside. Or the other option that I have considered is to somehow integrate the dust collection into my cart. But for now, the only way I can find out if it's going to work or not is to actually give it a try. So I've got a couple of really simple pieces and parts and I'd like to step you through how I'm gonna do this. Let's take a look at how this is all gonna to go together by deconstructing a little model that I built here. I have four inch PVC pipe coming out of my dust collector. This will be a dedicated line for the shop bot. To reduce from four inch down to two and a half inch, I start with a reducer fitting. And that is a pretty simple piece that goes from four inch to two and a half inch. Then I will cut a hole in my ceiling, two and a half inches to fit this coupling. Then I found this two and a half inch flanged inlet. And I'm gonna add a sort of a backer board to the back of the drywall. This will give me something to screw the fitting uh, on the shop workshop side into. So we squeeze all those together. We're gonna put some screws in from the workshop side and then that will allow for this hose end fitting to simply push friction fit into the flanged inlet. I also picked up this two and a half inch, 10 foot section of hose. And so this fitting, which is a two and a half inch hose end, it's a hose end because it has threading here that you can actually thread this into this hose. So let's put it together. Well, welcome to my workshop attic here. Kind of a dark and dungy attic, just like all attics are in some ways, but open air and non-insulated, which is something I intend to fix sometime in the fairly near future, hopefully. So the first order of business is going to be vacuuming up this general area. I've already done some and I'll do a little bit more. So just as I suspected, 32 inches is on this board right here. Somewhere about here, coming out 18 from the brick wall to take a look at the actual top plate. And conveniently, if I look down here, I can see my trim board. Take a peek. So where the light is sort of shining through there is the actual trim board that I have on the wall above the CNC. And so that tells me that this particular ceiling joist here is what I want to measure from. Coming out 18 from that guy. Wow, puts us out here. Oh, 
X marks the spot, and that board's coming up. Suction? I think just to keep things easy, we're going to just pop this guy off too. Now, time to bring our main trunk line, our main dust collection line, uh, in from the right here and cut our hole. I'm going to wait till the bitter end to cut that hole. Reason being, uh, I don't want to keep dropping stuff down a little hole, get a bunch of dirt and dust on my CNC, and uh, yeah, keep things clean. Shopbot likes it that way. Okay, so here's the dust collector. We're kind of turned around from where you were facing before. All of that's going on behind me here where we did the measuring and the vacuuming. This is one of the main trunk lines that comes out of the Y on the inlet side of the dust uh, collector, collector here. This main trunk line used to feed sort of my mobile tool carts. And for right now, I have made a bunch of changes to the shop and so I'm not quite sure what I want to do with those tools just yet. And so my thought is that I am going to dedicate this line 100% to the shop bot. So what I'm looking at now, I've got this pipe here uh, brought up and I'm going to have to cut this pipe. We want to be somewhere right in there. Okay, so I don't typically glue any of my fittings when it comes to dust collection. You certainly can, uh, and a lot of folks do, but for me, this foil tape seems to stop all the air and, you know, give us an airtight seal. So now we need to figure out the length of our pipe going back to the corner. We'll just measure back there and then cut off of that there. We're going to go with 86 inches. So we'll bring this guy back in and put a mark at 86. This uh, is a different, different type of pipe. And so if you're buying pipe for dust collection, know that there are several options. True PVC sewer pipe, drain pipe like this, is a bit more expensive than this type of pipe. This is drain pipe. And so this is safe and approved for use in home sewer and septic systems. This blue, this is just for drains, like French drains in your yard and uh, gutter drains, that kind of thing. So this is considerably cheaper. So if you're looking for a cheaper option, this will do exactly the same thing as this for less. guy in there and this is a pretty good opportunity for us to maybe turn our pipe down a little bit so that we can eliminate the need for these blocks holding it up okay we're looking pretty good back there okay so we're back where we drew the hole and this is where we want to put our two and a half inch port going down into the ceiling I have the pipe we just cut coming to it and what I believe will work is this type of a setup. I've got an elbow here, a 90, and just a piece of off-cut pipe that I'm gonna actually mount to our two and a half inch flange. First step is going to be cutting the pipe that we just cut down to the exact length. We'll go ahead and make that cut and roughly fit it together, and then we'll attach the two and a half inch coupling to put it down through the ceiling, and we'll see what that all looks like. So we're back down in the workshop here. Turns out I'm actually going to need another filler plate to go between this flange fitting 
and the drywall. I tested that by putting this guy up and can't quite get it to sandwich in nicely. So we're just gonna go ahead and add another half inch. All the way up through the drywall and into that backer plate above. Nice and tight, everything's secure. Now we'll prep our flexible hose to go to the shop bot and up into here and we'll be set. Okay, so to finish this up, just had a couple of extra fittings. The first one is the two and a half inch hose end that we were talking about earlier in the video. I added a hose clamp just for an extra insurance policy so that this guy's not gonna pull out and it's gonna keep it airtight as well. This end will go into our ceiling connection, which just friction fits nice and tight. And then on this end, I found an old fitting from a shop vac vacuum. Uh, I ended up sanding it down and a little bit of file work and uh, turns out it fits really nicely here on the shop bot dust boot. So we slide that guy on there nice and tight. I'm going to add a bungee here just to keep the hose out of the way of the gantry, uh, but a little bit of playing around once the machine gets running and we shouldn't have a problem. So everything seems to have worked out really well. Uh, not a not a hugely complicated project, but certainly one that took a little bit of time. I was fortunate enough to have my son out here for a little while helping me. Uh, we ended up splitting time and did some wiring, added a brand new circuit in here as well. So a uh, fully dedicated shop vac or dust collection line for the shop bot and a fully dedicated 30 amp circuit for the shop bot as well now. So with all that, I think we're ready to fire this thing up and get going on cutting some stuff. So stick around. Here's a clip of my Harbor Freight dust collector firing up and building suction. And you can see a little bit of dust in the air, but it's really not that bad. And it's in the attic, so I don't worry much about it. There hasn't really been much dust building up up there, so pretty good. Alexa, turn on the DC. This clip is just a little comparison shot for you. I've got a half inch bit in the spindle here with no dust boot attached to the spindle. The dust collector is running, but as you can see, it's, it's not going to pick up the chips. They're flying everywhere. This is with the dust boot on. Uh, it's not quite touching the work surface though, so we're getting a few more chips, but we're just not quite there. And I never did quite get uh, to where the bit was sunk down low enough in that last project to make connection with the dust boot. But here, cutting MBF with a quarter inch bit, you can see complete dust removal. It's awesome. And I had one of my favorite shop helpers out here with me, keeping a close eye on the machine. To keep the dust collection hose in place, I ended up mounting a pipe to my ceiling. And then with a little bit of simple hardware and some rope, I am keeping that hose in place and keeping the dust boot hooked up to the dust collector. Here you see cutting three quarter inch pre-finished birch plywood and it is completely dust free beautiful thing. I could watch these things all day. This is a pretty deep pocket operation in some solid cherry and it's not getting all the chips but it's creating a pretty good little tornado there. Hey folks thanks for watching. I really appreciate your support and interest in my channel. If you found me through my Instagram feed welcome to my YouTube channel. I haven't put out very many videos here in the past but that's about to change. In particular I'll be putting out more CNC content like this video thanks to ShopBot Tools. ShopBot makes some incredible CNC machines and I am so fortunate to have one in my shop. Hey, my name's Ben from the Benjamin Butler Company. Thanks for watching everybody. Have a good day.